All right, this uh, next guest is one of my favorite all-time people. He was the original Death. Oh, sorry. He's an accomplished actor, an accomplished man, and I'm so happy to know him. Mr. Julian Ritchie! Hello. Hello, boys. Hello, it's been Julian. a while. It's been a while. Yeah, we were really excited. We saw your name on the list. Yeah. Yeah. Well, likewise. And people are flocking in. Look at them. Yeah. Here they They're come. Here in. they come. Come on in. My goodness me. Well, it's great to have you. Thank you. Have a great time with the people. All right. I'll Hello. see you. I'll see yeah. you in a little bit. Thanks. See you soon. All right. Hello, people. Hello. Well, thank you so much for coming out. This is quite the uh, occasion, isn't it? With uh, one thing and another. Uh, yeah. But um, I realized, uh, I, I was thinking about today, and it's 10 years since I got the call to come in and do my first appearance on this show that I've never heard of called Supernatural. And uh, I, I distinctly remember I was actually filming something else and being completely obsessed with that and then my agent said, oh, and you've got to go to Vancouver and, and do a show. And I said, what? Va Vancouver? Oh, yeah, okay. Supernatural. And uh, I sort of went onto the set and then as I was on set, I realized that it was a big deal show, even though we were, it was season five at that point. And, um, and then I sort of very quickly began to realize, oh yeah, it is a big deal show. So it's been amazing, 10 years. Few things have happened. I cut my hair. I died. My daughter got married. Uh, it's quite a bit, you know, like life goes on, life and death and, and things, but it's been a while. And um, it's just great to be here, and I'm so glad that everybody's come. I know that it's, it's a, a weird time at the moment, and uh, we're all sort of like doing whatever we can to make everything work, but it, it does feel a bit strange. So extra appreciation for you coming, because it means a lot to me too. Something that um, is important for me with uh, conventions is that it really is an opportunity to meet people. And um, I like dancing at the karaoke too. That's one of my favorite things. So uh, I'm looking forward to that and um, I'm happy you're here. All right, okay. So, oh my goodness me, there are people. And this is another thing. I, I remember distinctly my first ever convention. I, I had no idea what to do. And I was standing here sort of like this. And I looked and I went, what are all those people doing over there? And then I was told, somebody came and whispered in my ear, they're asking you questions. <laughs> oh, okay, so anyway. So, okay, here goes. There's quite a few people over there, let's start. Hello. Hi. Hi, okay, so my question is, because I know Death on the Show loves to eat a lot of greasy food or like um, from places from food trucks and stuff. I was wondering, out of all the foods that you did eat or you um, talked about on the show, what was your favorite to like get to know that you were going to eat that okay. over and over again? What was my favorite food? Well, I don't know. Dill pickle chips were the biggest surprise. <laughs> and I, I, I'd never seen them in my life before that show, and they were, they were pretty good. Uh, but I, I think they, they're classic that everybody identifies my character with is Chicago pizza. But I, I have a confession, I, a secret is that I don't think me, Julian, the actor, actually ate pizza for a year after that show. Because I sat there and as I was saying, that was the first show that I did with Supernatural, the first episode. I didn't know a lot about it, and then I, as I was on set, I was doing the, the scene in the pizza parlor with Jensen, and we were, we were eating, and I knew that the pizza was a big part of the eating, but I sort of foolishly thought it would be a really good idea to take big bites of the pizza early on in the rehearsals, 
to sort of show the director, I thought this would be a good direction to go, and I'm there eating, and then I'm, wonder, I'm looking at Jensen, and Jensen's not taking any bites whatsoever. And then I realized, ah. <laughs> and then I, I think like take 37, I was chewing the pizza and then running off to the side of the stage and go, Bleh. well, not actually, you know, expelling, but you know, getting rid of, it wasn't very pleasant. It wasn't very, anyway, so yeah, pizza, Chicago pizza, deep dish, I think. Uh, there's nothing quite like it, and I know we got some folks from Chicago here who I'm sure will swear blindly by it, right? No, I don't like the thin crust ones, I like the big, deep, thick ones, yeah. So there you go, that's my answer for that. Okay, we got, let's go over here. Let's, hello. Hello. Got consider, oh no, we got a few people over here too. Hi. Hi. Um, I really love your performance on Supernatural as Death. It's one of my favorite performances. Well, thank you. And I, um, I am wondering what kind of role or what specific role you would like to play that you haven't yet played in your career, whether it be on television or on stage or in a movie. Um, the kind of role that Brad Pitt plays. <laughs> Oh, no. Well, you know, like the, the, the guy in um, like the latest film when he's all like bronze and on the roof and he's got his muscles flexing. I'd sort of like to be like that, but I guess there's a part of me that knows that's never going to happen. But no, uh, I don't know. Um, I have no regrets. I'm, uh, I'm a character actor. I've always acted. Some people refer to it as like being a journeyman actor. I've acted all my life. Um, I've been doing it for like 43, 44 years. Um, so I've done theater and film and television and radio and video games. And, and that's what I do. And I actually love performing. Uh, so each job is pretty fun. The, the, main th the main issue about being a character actor is that you come in and you kind of blaze strongly for a couple of days, you know, and you, you add a primary color to a picture and then you go away again, you know, like the character of death or, or lots of roles that I've played. That's fun and I like doing it. The, the other side of the coin is that there are times when I'd like to be the guy that carries a show. You know, I'd like to go on a longer journey sometimes, like be more of a, a long distance character than just a short sprint. However, um, I'm starting to do that a little bit now too, um, with, um, with some independent films and things, so, so no regrets really. Um, and the reality is when you look like I do, and you, <laughs> handsome, <laughs> debonair, you know, all the, thank you, Ooh, that got, good, got a good response. Um, I, I'm going to be cast in a particular way, right? Like, like I, I can't, uh, uh, jo you know, joking aside, I'm not going to play the kind of roles that Brad Pitt does. I'm going to be the guy that is in a scene with him or with, with, it, with different guys, but I'm, I'm fine with that. I'm, I'm quite happy. Team player. That's me. Thank you. Thanks. Hi. Hi. Um, my question is, what's been your favorite part about playing death? Up till when he got the when he get this until separate. when I was killed, and I know oh, no. uh, my favorite part about it. Um, well, it, it's a fun character, right? Yeah. A lot of fun, um, and I, I think I, I, I've just been talking to some folks about it uh, about the way that it was written. From the first time that I went in and I played Death, there was enough fun to be had with the character that he. He was kind of relaxed and elegant, and he obviously liked human things like junk food, and he obviously had a, a, a relationship with the boys, so he wasn't just like some big tough guy coming in to show who's who and, and to put them straight. Like, there was room for play, and that's what I really appreciated about the script. And playing with Jensen particularly, because most of my scenes are with Jensen, but and with Jared, uh, they're generous actors, and so we've had some fun scenes together. So for me as an actor, going back to the previous question, 
what do I do? I like performing. So if, if I'm performing in a good scene that makes sense and has a character that has a bit of humor and, and a, bit of, um, a, bit, a bit of sass, it's fun. So, so it's kind of a few different things. And I gotta say, by being in Supernatural, like I'm, I'm a working actor, I've been in many, many shows, but it's the only one that's made me cool in my kids' friends' eyes. <laughs> It's suddenly, like, it's suddenly, like, for years and years, oh yeah, my dad's an actor. It's boring, boring. And then, suddenly, people would come up to my daughter and say, your dad is in Supernatural. <laughs> oh my God! And it was like, I, my status went from down here to, like, way up here. So it's like, yeah. So I, I've got high status in my family. Still, even though I'm dead. Even though I'm a dead death. Yeah. So, there you go. All right, next question. Thank you, thank you very much. Hello. Hi. Um, I was wondering if you have ever participated in any of the pranks that the boys pull on each other? Um, um, the pranks, well, again, it's funny. I, we've just been talking about this. Um, most of the scenes that I do are food scenes, right? Food is really hard on camera. You have to kind of, for continuity, you have to have the same amount of food in your mouth each time, because on the many takes, and it has to look real, and it has to, you, you have to swallow some of it, I'm afraid. Uh, no, I, I actually like all the food that I'm eating, but it, it means that there's a lot of concentration, a lot of stuff going on, and, and often a lot of special effects, like the episode um, with Misha, um, when there's, there's all the kind of, like the world feels like it's coming to an end and stuff's exploding and, and it's the end of season nine maybe? I can't remember when it, when it is. Anyway, it, there's lots to focus on and if you're in the middle of a scene like that, there's not a lot of room for, for pranks. And I think the boys are really good in that they do pranks when it keeps everybody's spirits up. And, uh, you know, when, when things are low or need a bit of a boost, they're not afraid of kind of putting a spark into the room. But with me, they didn't dare. <laughs> and especially that Misha guy. I, f I, I always want to flick his ear. <laughs> flick. Just, just behave yourself, would you? Like, yeah. So, so I, I sometimes think that. Like, my character is almost like their stern uncle. And sometimes I think that I, I feel a bit like that when I was on the set. You know, it's like, uh-oh, Uncle Death's here. <laughs> Mind your P's and Q's. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Hi. Oh, sorry. Hi, I'm sorry, just a moment. I know some very generous people are clapping at the end of um, questions. And I, I keep thinking, oh, well, do clap. Don't be shy. It feels like, oh yeah, 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 I think that. Uh, thank you for your question, previous person. Hello, next person. Oh, how do you get into the mindset of that play the character? Now, because I, I'm so bad, at, uh, my, my hearing is so poor, I'm going to come up close and I'm going get, to get you to tell me. Oh, thank Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. How did I get in the mindset of death, the character? All right. So, well, I think that the fun thing about the character is that he's not just somebody that's um, all doom and gloom and takes lots of preparation and, and um, uh, like getting prepared for, because it's a heavy thing. I think he's actually, in many ways, one of the most human characters on the show. Which is kind of one of those things, and after all, what's humanity? But it's mortal, right? And, and death, and full of cycles. So, honestly, I, I didn't have to kind of get into a serious place to, to portray him. If anything, I had to get into a frame of mind where I was um, stern, but um, open to hear what the other actors were saying, like, uh, like the characters of Dean and Sam, 
and um, making sure that they were up to snuff. So, so I, I, a lot of people have asked me that question, and, and I find it hard, sort of, I don't have a process as an actor, I don't kind of go, okay, I'm playing death now, I've got to get into my death mode, or, you know, like, seriously, like, some people have different processes, right? Like, you know, you hear of method actors getting into, like, really their, their sensibility, and their, their own people on the film set can only call them by their character's name, and then they start behaving like their character behaves. I'm not in that kind of school of, of training. I'm much more like me and open, and um, so I, whenever I've come to the set of Supernatural, I've just had to come open and alive and um, kind of ready with, with a twinkle in my eye, really and to look for humor rather than heaviness. Thanks for your question. Thank you. Okay, next, next person. Hi. Hi. Um, so you were on a show called Nero Wolf. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I really like it. But um, it was kind of a weird show in that they had- I'm always in weird shows. <laughs> the same actors playing different yeah. roles. Yeah, yeah. I've never seen a show like that, but I was wondering what that was like to be part of a, a cast like that. It was great. So Timothy Hutton, do you guys know Timothy Hutton? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was his brainchild. He came up with this idea of very much like the old um, TV networks in the 40s and 50s used to have a resident acting company, like a theater troupe, and they would put on, on um, a show, and it, each week, a member of the acting company would play a different character. Like, you would be a cop one week, you'll be a killer the next week, you'll be a doctor the next week, you'll be, like, somebody without even a, a speaking part the next week. So it was an ensemble of, of actors. So he put together a bunch of old professional actors, and he created this story about Nero Wolfe, who was a private investigator. And it was set in New York in the uh, 50s, I think. So it had a real period feel to it. And I was one of the members of the company and it was great because it was like being a member of an acting company. So it's really cool that one week I could be the bad guy and the next week I could be the, the comedy element. And um, you, we don't do that much now. Sort of times have moved on. And, and particularly an actor like myself is in danger of only playing one particular type of, of role. I find that in the theater, I get the opportunity to play lots of different types of roles, but um, in film and television, because it's so much dictated by the way you look, you tend to get typecast a lot easier, right? Um, it, it tends to happen. Um, so, so it was great. I, I really enjoyed myself. Unfortunately, it didn't last long. I, what was it? Season? Two seasons, I, I, I think? Yeah. Not, not many. Anyway, I bet you were surprised when you saw me. It was and pretty cool. <laughs> a very young-looking Julian Richings there, too. And to some people say that, you know, I'll bump into somebody and they'll go, I saw you on the TV the other day. My God, you were young. <laughs> Look at myself in the mirror. Sorry. I, I mean, that's, I guess that's the funny thing about being on film. What, one of the great things we all share is watching the boys age 15 years, right? It's, it always shocks me when I go back to an early episode of Supernatural and I look at them and I go, oh my God, they're so young. But uh, that's, that's the beauty of it. Anyway, thank you. Thanks for your question. Thank you. Hello. Hi, Julian. My name's Alyssa. Uh, my question is, if you were to go on a road trip with death, where would you go and what would you want to see together? Where would I go? And what was the second bit? Where would you want to go and what would you want to see together? What would I want to see together? Yeah, like any famous landmarks or something along the way on the road trip. With okay. death. Or with, fast food places. Oh, with oh with with that, yeah. if I was with death. Thank yeah. you. Right, right, right. I don't know. Um, I think a road trip with death would be a lot of fun. <laughs> a, a road trip across the US would be, would, would be fun. Um, although, yeah. I don't know that um, Death would be a very good traveler. I, th I think he'd only have one outfit. Somehow I can't imagine him like dressing for the weather, like in the extreme heat. He'd still have a suit. And uh, when it was really cold, he'd have an umbrella. 
and it, w it wouldn't, wouldn't be too successful, so I think it'd be very grumpy. So I think I would have to take lots of blankets and uh, extra food and things to keep him happy. Because he would just, like, yeah, he, he would just not understand that the weather changed and things. And also I'd have to take a lot of um, ind indigestion tablets and things, because he would definitely eat badly wherever he went and would have terrible stomach complaints. But I, I, I don't know, I can't think of any way. Anybody else got any good places where death could visit? Syracuse, New York! Oh, oh okay. Death Valley. <laughs> death Valley, that's true. That's true. <laughs> All right. I, 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 will, I must say that, uh, yeah, I, it's only in the world of supernatural that I get so much, um, you know, so many people saying things like, can't wait to meet death! And, oh, death's coming, great! And I think, oh, God, I hope somebody knows the context that they're <laughs> talking about this. It's that's so terrible. And it's like when we had the photos, you know, some people come up and go, um, could you just kill me from behind, please? And uh, could you just reap me to the side? And then my friend is stopping you reaping me. And I go, sure. And then I think, what's that photo going to look like? <laughs> Sorry, Mum. I didn't mean it, you know. Anyway. That's the joy. Thank you. Thanks for your question. Hi. Hello. Um, we all know that Supernatural is written very well, um, but there's also always a bit that the actor brings to the role. So I was wondering what part of the performance that you gave is you and not the script? What part's me? Well, it's sort of like a happy mix, really. Um, I think, in all seriousness, um, I think that what I, like, I'm British originally, right? And so I carry a bit of a, an accent. I've got, and <laughs> some people say, you're so snooty. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I don't mean to be. I've just got that silly accent. Every time I open my mouth, some fool speaks. <laughs> but I'm back. It's a joke. But, uh, anyway, no, it, like, I hear this accent, and it comes out, um, and I, I can't really change it, it's just there. And I think it makes me feel like I'm old school. It, and because of the look, I realized that I grew up in England in the 60s watching Hammer Horror films. And my heroes in those old Hammer Horror films were people like Peter Cushing, Christopher Lee, those guys that used to be very elegant, but very sort of mysterious and suave, but like, you knew that they, they, they were sort of deadly as well. So I, haven't, I didn't deliberately do this, but I realized I brought that in the way I look and the way I sound to the role. And I've sort of gone with it. And, and the, the writers and the producers obviously like that part of it. And that's sort of partly me. And I'm a bit, bit of an old, fussy old guy. You ask my family. <laughs> but quite nice too. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Who's next? Hello. My question to you would be, if you could bring death back from the dead, how would you want that to look? If I could bring death back? I, I would love to sort of, um, I'd love to surprise the boys. Like, I'd love Dean to, like, there to be a scene with Dean walking along the road or something, and like a banana skin on the floor and him like walking along and slipping and there's a guy sitting there laughing at him going remember me or maybe i could hand him a scythe or something would you like to cut some of the banana or, or i don't know like i i'd like to make a very jokey appearance and get my own back on dean i think that's that's the way i would write it but uh, i don't think it's gonna happen somehow but uh, we'll see we'll see all right thank you Okay. Hi. Hi, Julian. I'm Wendy. Hello. My question is, what is the most interesting thing you've had to learn to do for a role? The most interesting, did you say? Yes. Yeah, the most interesting thing I've had to learn for a role. Well, as an actor, you sort of, you say yes all the time, right? So there was one time when I was in a Western, and um, it filmed in the Rocky Mountains in January and February, which is like really cold, right? And of course the first thing they say, can you ride a horse? <laughs> yes! <laughs> so 
I thought, well, you have to, you have to say that, otherwise they won't give you the part, right? So I said yes, and um, they said, well, we'll send you to um, a couple of lessons, and then. What happened was that I didn't ever go to those horse training lessons before I arrived on the film set. And so I arrived and I met the wranglers, the horse wranglers, who were these grizzled old guys that really knew what they were doing. And seriously, the guy took one look at me and he said, you've never ridden a horse, have you? And I just had to say, how did you know? And he said, I just knew. You just don't look like you've ever ridden a horse. So it, anyway, it ended up with them giving me what they termed as the bomb-proof horse. And what that was, was this beautiful horse, but every, he was so well-trained and so docile that every time he heard rolling, he would go like this, and then when he heard action, he would start walking, literally. <laughs> And it made me look really good. And I would be on there, like, and I'd have my seat, and this horse was going along. And then, I, I was really proud of this, and my daughter came to visit me on set after about three weeks. And I very proudly took her up the mountain to the stables and showed her my horse. And I said, I'm riding this horse. And my daughter was really impressed. And I came out of the stable, and again, the same old grizzled horse wrangler was there, and he said, hello, who's this? I said, my daughter, I have just showed her my horse. And he said, wrong horse. <laughs> I had actually been showing off the wrong horse, just to show how completely useless I was. Anyway, I faked it, and, and sometimes, like, being an actor is just faking things sort of lying to begin with and then hoping that you won't get found out. But once you're found out, hoping that you'll get by, and this guy actually was great. He, he realized that I was useless and he covered for me and he was really good. So, uh, so uh, I guess that's one of my most interesting story. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Um, you were on a show called Orphan Black. Yeah. Titania. And you played a really interesting character, and I just wondered what that was like with the smuggling people and all of that kind of subterfuge. It was, it was great. So the reason I was in that show um, was a, a friend, two friends of mine, actually, were the showrunners. And I'd done their early films. Graham Manson, who was the writer, um, did a movie called Cube. I don't know if any of you guys have seen Cube. So I was in Cube. That was his the first film that he wrote. So I knew him from way back, and John Fawcett, who also directed and was one of the showrunners, uh, I'd done his first film at film school. So these guys knew me, and they said that, that they wanted me to be in the mix. But it was such an exciting show that they were kind of writing it on the fly. They were writing shows not many episodes in advance. Like normally with a show, you know, you, you have 12 episodes or something, and you pretty well know where the show's going. With Orphan Black, it was, they kind of had an idea, but they were really like winging it at times and really creative and taking people and going, this works, we'll go there and we'll do that. And it was, so I was part of that mix where they knew they wanted me to be in it, but they didn't know how much my character would be part of it. And what would happen is that they, they said, well, we can't really guarantee you you'll be involved in all the episodes. We'll take it an episode at a time. So what would happen is I'd be in an episode, they'd establish me, then I'd go and get another job and I'd disappear and then my character would disappear and then it would come back and then come back. So in, you, if you watch Orphan Black, you go, oh, here's Julian, he's got a, an interesting character and then I disappear again and then I come back in and then, the realities of being a, you know, a working actor in a show that's evolving. But um, I gotta say that it's a great show to be on uh, and uh, Tap was, Fantastic. Um, what, what a great actress and what a great person. So uh, it was a, an honor to be on that show. So I'm glad you liked it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, hello? Hi. Um, you said that you were a character actor and that's what you're known for. Um, I recognized you when I saw you on Star Trek and you were a Cardassian. I want to know what it's like 
the differences for you when you have to go into a character that it's mostly the way you look versus your what you have to portray just acting like my inner soul kind of thing like yeah. the, di the difference between yes and, yeah. you, and, and you got very lucky to be able to work with michael yeah. westmoreland who is my idol it, it's it's a bit it's a bit of both like what you like you can't deny who you are and the way you look and that's kind of what an actor has to bring and you have to kind of go okay like this way and I'm going to own it, um, but I'm not going to be restricted by whatever other people think that is. I'm going to take it to a, a, another level. So, I mean, even in Supernatural, the, the idea of death, I think, is really cool because even though he's such an iconic character, he's not, he, he, he's surprising, right? Like, he's surprisingly gentle, he's surprisingly funny, he's surprisingly sassy, there's, he, there's surprise in there uh, and for me to play the counterbalance is always important, so if you're playing a character like death, to play life and to play humour really helps that because it means that you can turn and then you can play the, the edge right, and it's the same if you're playing any character to counterpoint like if you're playing a romantic lead, not to just get caught up in being cute, for instance, but to play darker um, themes or, or desires or, or whatever, it makes the character much more interesting. So for me, it's just taking what I have and um, playing other notes and not always just hitting the same thing on the head, you know? Um, and I take that to everything. So whether it's supernatural or whether it's an independent film or whether it's... Um, I don't know, a commercial or, or whatever it is, it's nice to sort of do a slightly different take on things. And I, I always try to. That, that's my attempt. Thank you. Thanks for the question. <clears throat> Hello. Hi, Julian. Hello. I'm Deborah. That was a good lead in for my question. My question is we're expecting a lot of gravitas from death when we meet death. But in the scenes with Dean, there's a lot of humor and levity, but also it seems like there's a lot of affection. Yeah. And I was wondering if you feel that those, that relationship and chemistry was written into the script, or when you and Jensen were acting together, if you ended up creating a lot of the affection and humor that we see in those scenes. Well, it's a great question. I think, honestly, it's both. I think that it's in there. The idea of that is written in there, like we didn't, change the lines or anything that's those scenes have been constructed by the writers but we're lucky in that we hit it off and and uh, i gotta say that jensen is a, a really good actor we all admire him for many different reasons like he's he's cute all right he's cute <laughs> and he's a bunch of different things like but he's also what we mustn't forget he's a very good actor and um and so is jared and that's why the show is so successful is that Going back to my previous point, they can play different notes, right? They, they don't just play the same note all the time. And so when I came into the, the show, um, they were able to, like Jensen particularly, was able to play off uh, me and, and make it be scared of me. And by him being scared of me, it made me able to just relax and play the humor more. Maybe even more than was in the original writing, but that I could actually kind of be very offhand because I could trust Jensen to play scared. Because he, he wasn't just trying to outmuscle me and show I'm not afraid of death. He really played the scene beautifully, right? And often to create a, an effective scene, don't just look at the person talking, you look at the person listening. And, and uh, our signals as an audience are often the reaction of the person listening is more important than the person talking often. And the boys, if you watch them in their scenes, they're always engaged and they're, they're always making the other person look good. And that to me is the, the hallmark of a good actor. Thank you. Hi. Of all the characters you've played, which one would you say is your favorite? So, I missed it, sorry. Which one would you say is your favorite character that you've played? Oh, that I've played? Um, well, I, I've got a real fond place for, for the character of death. I, I, I must say, I, I really do. One of my favorite roles ever, I, there was a period where I used to play a 
bunch of rock and roll guys <laughs> when I was very young, you know. <laughs> but because like I've, I've got the old uh, sort of Charlie Watts, um, uh -huh. you know, like the Rolling Stones kind of like look and the British thing. So I did a, a movie one time called Hardcore Logo, and it, it, maybe somebody has obviously seen it somewhere, <laughs> somewhere out there, someone's seen it. It's a, a small independent film, but I really liked it. It's about the reunion of a punk band, and I play a sort of um, like a, a punk godfather, like Iggy Pop kind of guy who's on a farm, and the punk band comes to pay him a visit, and he's... I, it actually turns out that he's not very happy to see them, but it's a great role, and, and I, I was very proud of that role, and I like, I like playing musicians. I, I, um, I, I've, I've always admired musicians. I'm not musical, but I've admired what songs do, and for me as an actor, music affects me greatly, and I, I get a lot of inspiration from songs and, and soundtracks and stuff, so... So to play a musician uh, and to play this character called Bucky Haight was, was a big deal. And, and for a little while, it, uh, a lot of people really responded to that role. Rock and roll. Death, the rock and roll godfather. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Hello. Hi. Um, my question for you is my favorite scene with Death is his entrance when he first comes on the scene. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I was wondering what your favorite scene as death was? Well, I, I, I think that's got to be one of them. I mean, what an intro, right? It's pretty good. And I had no idea. Like, that I had arrived. That was my first day on set. It was freezing cold in the morning. And, um, you know, the, the director would say stuff like, well, get in the car and drive up and hit that mark over there. And I got in the car, and it was like driving a boat, right? Like, this. nothing happens. And then I just had to go around a camera and then hit my mark and I'm going... Mm. <laughs> anyway, I, I did it, um, but I, I, I think it was a, a wonderful scene and I actually had a lot of fun and it allowed me kind of a soft intro into my character because there wasn't all the pressure of lines and stuff. It was more attitude and it was a great establishment of attitude, right? And that song, what a song, right? Yeah. Like, like. And again, going back to my love of music, it's amazing what a soundtrack can do to a character and, and for, for an actor. So by the time you guys get to meet my character, you're going, oh my God, he's like he's super powerful. So, so, that all, so I think that scene and the pizza parlor scene really are pre pretty amazing. Okay, thank you. Hello. Hello, I'm Ivana. My question is, you're very vibrant as a person, and you have a very outgoing character. So, uh, for you playing Death, how did it feel to know that you're going to play a character late into a show where the main characters are already powerful, and you have to play a character where you're like, no, this is how it actually is going to go? Um, well, I just, I, I was lucky. I, I didn't I wasn't too intimidated by that. I'm, I'm sort of used to being parachuted into shows, to be honest with you. That, that happens a lot with an actor like me. You know, like I'll go in and I'll, I'll do a bit on a big movie, say like a Man of Steel, for instance. I, I, it was kind of like weird being in this huge multi-million dollar movie and I'm just in a small part of it, um, or X-Men or, or things like that. So I, I get used to going in and working with people who are pretty well known. But generally, people are pretty cool, especially the kind of genre shows that I do, because often it's about making the effects work, which is why I like horror films. I do a lot of horror films, and often you sort of leave your ego at the door with a horror film, because the scene is often about how can we best make the head being sliced off work well? You know, it's not about, oh, but my character would never scream like that. It, you know, it's, it's actually about how you make the gag work. And so I'm in a lot of movies where people park their egos at the door and they just get on with it. And so I, I'm sort of, I, I wasn't intimidated either by Supernatural because I started with that, um, the, the montage, the, the opening sequence. And then I went into that really good scene with Jensen, who was very generous. So 
So it was, it worked out. But, but did you feel powerful? I, f I felt very, well, after that, that intro, right, after that scene where I, I mean, let's face it, if you walk along a street and you do that, and somebody falls over, you feel pretty good, pretty powerful. Don't mess with me, right? Okay, thank you. <laughs> Hello, we're getting to the end here, hi. Hello. I have a question. I was wondering if death sleeps, and if he does, what does he dream about? <laughs> if he sleeps, and what does he dream about? Well, I don't know. Food, probably. <laughs> probably, like, you know, what? Hmm. Feeling a bit peckish tonight. I shouldn't have had that Stilton cheese. I should have had. Oh. Dates or, you know, like, I, yeah, I, I don't know. What's he dream about? But I, in all seriousness, I think that it's a fun question. But I think it's interesting you ask that because it shows that in our imaginations, the character of death has a conscience and isn't just a, a cardboard cutout and that he's very human, right? It goes back to the thing that we were talking about, that the beauty of... The show Supernatural is that we talk about the supernatural universe and vampires and reapers and, you know, on and on and on. But at the end of the day, it's all about humanity and uh, vulnerability and, uh, uh, yeah, so I, I, I think, again, my character, it's, it's an interesting question because I think he is very human and he does those things. So thank you. Thank you very much. All right, uh, do we have one more person? Oh, we're done. Five minutes. Okay. Five. Or, oh, we got someone? Oh, we got somebody over there? No, I'm, am I running away from someone? No, hello. There were people on that side. You like to dance during karaoke, I'd notice. <laughs> and it's super I like fun. to dance, yes. Uh, is there a song that you just can't help but dancing to whenever you hear it? <laughs> oh my. Um, I, one of the reasons I dance is because I can't sing. So I, I, I'll often say to, to uh, the, the boys, uh, I'll, I'll dance, you sing, I'll dance. I'll dance in the background. But is there anything I like? Um, I like all things um, ska. Do you like ska? No, ska. I'm sort of, I'm, I'm a bit of a, I'm, I'm, I'm a product of my generation, I guess. I grew up with, um, in the 60s with Prince Buster and um, uh, Desmond Decker and a bunch of Jamaican uh, artists that moved to Britain and to London in the 60s. And that music influenced me greatly and it really uh, kind of influenced a lot of British music and it influenced the Rolling Stones, R&B, and, and so that sort of mix in there is something that I just, you know, I start moving to it. So. Um, so I, I guess that's, that's my, my favorite. Why? Are you gonna play it? Or what? <laughs> okay, but no, I, yeah, Prince Buster, I, th I think, uh, is, I, can't, I can't keep still. Yeah, okay. Hello, Julian. Uh, my question for you is because you play this powerful, kind of intimidating, character of death, enough to intimidate Dean of all people. Um, when fans actually meet you for the first time, do they come to you a bit intimidated and then they're actually surprised about how exuberant and joyful and friendly you are? Like what is their initial reaction it, it when they is. meet you and versus when they, after they meet you? Well, I can tell you a story. So the first time I was in Dallas, I was at a calm at Dallas, it was creation convention and for some reason we I think the hotel that we were staying in was like above the convention and so we came down from like the 32nd floor down to the convention level and there was somebody with me like you know a, a creation staff person was with me and the elevator goes down and then a guy gets on next to me and the guy's going about his normal business and stands there in the elevator next to me and we, we go down the elevator further, and on, on about four floors later, there's a bunch of Supernatural fans, big Supernatural t-shirts and stuff, all there. And they're, they're all talking to each other, and the doors open, and they see me, and they go, ah! 
And then they just don't move. They don't get on the elevator. And the elevator door shut. And the best thing was the response of the guy that was next to me. Well, I'm st like he had no idea for like 10 floors going down. He was looking over at me now. Uh, he didn't know whether to get out on the next floor or what to do. It was really amazing. and It was one of the best moments ever. I just wish somebody had been filming it. Uh, uh, this poor guy. And, and I never said anything. I just smiled. And when he got out, I went... Oh. <laughs> Still doesn't know what he did. Right? And, uh, but it, I get that response sometimes. Sometimes, it, you know, fans will be, be amazed surprised to see me in that but but also because I play death they expect me to be like really really serious and I tend not to be really <laughs> had you noticed yeah. Uh, so yeah it's fun it's actually fun uh, and uh, I have some fun encounters with people too anyway and thank you so it's uh, it's, it's really that now is that everybody we're, we're done Okay, um, well, I think we're done. I, I can hear noises backstage. I, th I think the boys are there. So I just wanted to say to everybody, thank you for being here. Love you. And um, I'll see you later on. And I think this is a, oh, come on, boys. Oh, it's got to be a smooth segue. I've got to keep talking. Bye. Hey, Julian Richings, everybody. Yeah.